Welcome back. Yesterday I opened my email and found among an offer for breast enlargements and one for a four-hour erector set a news brief that was no spam at all. It claimed that 61% of the population is against what the press calls a bailout of car makers. Last night I tried to analyze why so many are against what generally is accepted as a conditional bailout. I use that term reluctantly. I came up with three main reasons. Frustrations, misinformation and emotions. If there is one thing I have learned in my professional life, it is that emotions perpetually interfere with cool and proper analysis. In today's blog I am going to discuss three points. One, the true cost of no bailout. Two, the combined causes of car makers failure and three, the patent situation as one of them. Before I do, please give me 11 seconds to explain my background. As MBA and MSWE I am foremost an analyst. I have consulted companies on a global scale that is in Japan, Central Europe and the United States mostly in matters of innovation and corporate reorganization. I was a consultant to General Motors Opel division in Rüsselsheim, Germany, to Mercedes-Benz in Stuttgart unter Türkheim and Honeywell's automotive division in California. My work in innovation led to my name being listed as inventor on 65 patents or patent applications. So I am well familiar with the purpose and spirit of patent laws. Now to point one, the true cost of a non-bailout. According to the Center for Automotive Research, as quoted by CNN Money, a non-bailout would result in 2.5 million workers being laid off that receive unemployment benefits. The New York Times reported that GM workers were paid $70 per hour. That is false. The average base pay for GM workers is $28. To calculate the economic damage, the base pay matters most. The economic damage of a layoff of 2.5 million people has two elements. First, the loss in income shown on the next table, which amounts to 145.6 billion per year, is a significant loss in purchasing power. Next, there is the cost to the community via unemployment benefits. Based on potentially outdated figures that may be lower than the actual current ones, the average total unemployment benefits were $3,118 per unemployed. Before I go further, let me remind you. If you need to look longer at the tables, click on the pause button below. All right then, $3,118 times 2.5 million amounts to 7.8 billion in added damages that is a cash outlay paid by the taxpayers. President-elect Obama has indicated he may extend unemployment benefits, in which case this number would be higher. Now let's discuss misinformation. Some, as in the New York Times case I just mentioned, it appears may be based on aversion towards unions. In another case based on political orientation, as here in the case of Republican Senator Shelby of Alabama, a wannabe economist who claims that the doldrums the car makers find themselves in have nothing whatever to do with the downturn in the economy and are solely based upon mismanagement. I know, I know, it is tempting to follow that argument, but it is only partially true. First, car sales fell when oil prices went through the roof. Second, car sales fell 
when the economy turned sour, both events were causal for lackluster sales. And yes, anyone who recalls a whole production batch of electric vehicles and crashes them is, forgive me, an idiot. Even if he was pressured by oil companies, major shareholders of GM to do so. There is another reason, of course, at the moment, Chevron acting as patent troll. I think you know that Chevron bought uh, via Texaco the Ovshinsky patent for a NIMH battery for the sole purpose to prevent car makers from bringing electric cars to market. I know there are other patents and other batteries available. At this time, I cannot argue for or against them. I, I just simply don't know enough. I'm researching as we speak. Here is a fraction of battery patents, 30 or 40 out of over 10 thousands. So I have my work cut out. As to Chevron, however, let me say this. The purpose of patent law is to protect the inventor and give him a chance to bring his invention to market without being afraid that it would be stolen. Listen to me carefully now. The purpose of patent law is not to restrain the trade or keep an entire nation dependent on hostile nations for its oil supply. This borders on treason. Here then again is my indecent proposal. First, change the patent law to the point that a patent is invalid if held not to bring a product into the market but to restrain the trade. Next, provide bridge loans large enough to allow reorganization and retooling, but conditioned upon an agreement to immediately commence the electrification of cars, no ifs, ands or buts. I have argued and shown earlier that retooling is not the monstrous venture some want you to believe. Remember, we talk about installing electric motors in wheels, nothing else. I am not alone. Michael Moore was interviewed by Keith Olbermann. He too supports the electrification of cars. However, Moore's argument goes further. He asked why we would give 34 billion to companies that have a share value of only 3 billion. Don't get fooled. If we buy the companies for 3 billion, that doesn't solve the problem. We still need to invest sufficient to pay off creditors, retool and begin the elect electrification of cars. Let alone the fact that the value of a corporation is not calculated by its momentary share value but by its contribution to macroeconomics. I have presented some of the numbers earlier. Something else, if any one of you knows of a technology that bypasses Chevron's of Shinsky patents, by all means get in touch with me, with Congress or car makers. I would be careful though, talking to car makers or Congress, if the technology you propose has not been patented, it will be stolen, if you disclose it anyway. Clear? Thanks. I see you tomorrow.